TED Talk stands for Cheesehead Engineering Discussion. The talks are like TED Talks, but with a blue cheese twist. Today's speaker is Cindy Hopping, who is Director of Customer Technology at UPS Freight. She manages technologies related to the customers and will be speaking about her career. Thank you. How many of you know what you want to do? What do you want to do? Uh, I want to be a nuclear engineer. Nuclear engineer, good. How many of you don't know what you want to do? That works too. <laughs> um, when I got out of high school, I, when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to drive with a person who was a technical sales rep. And I thought that was the best, funnest job I'd ever seen. They drove around, they went and talked to some people about technology, and it didn't seem that hard. And I go, that's what I want to be. So I went ahead and said, okay, what do I need to do to get there? And the first thing, I go, well, I have to have a college degree. So I went to Virginia Tech and got myself a degree in marketing because I figured, hey, you know, I need to get a, something that deals with sales. And then I took some computer classes, and it was way back when where there was no such thing as a personal computer. So computer classes weren't that common. So I went ahead and did that. So I'm all on my plan. Oops, sorry. And then step two, getting the job. So I go and I think, okay, I want to work for IBM, Wang, Xerox, the big technology companies at the time. And then I found out that I didn't have the experience they wanted, nor they only looked at kids that had 4.0s and had perfect you know, college degrees, and I was not one of them. So then I'm like, now what am I going to do? My plan is different than I thought. So then I go, well, I got to live. Let's get a job in sales. So I did. I sold office supplies. And I did it for a little while. And I realized I was terrible at sales. So I went and got a marketing degree to do sales, and it was, I wasn't very good at it because they kept saying, there's a lot of no in sales. You know, so there's 20% yes, and that feels great, but there's 80% of the people saying no. And I go, I hate this. Oh my gosh, I hate this. So now what am I going to do? Um, so then I go, well, I just have to get another job because I just can't deal with all the no's all the time. And I was very disappointed. I felt like I wasted a four-year degree. And then I went to work for a lobbyist. And during that time, PCs came out. The first PCs. You know, there was no hard drive. You had these little disks. <laughs> and I loved it. I thought, this is just the coolest thing. So then I did that for a while. And then I go, I think I really want to program. And at that time, there was computer science degrees, but there wasn't a lot. And there was so much demand for people who had any computer experience that um, I went to a company and they said, we need people who do PC training and programming. So I did that. I started it, and I discovered that not only did I love PCs and working on it, but I love programming. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even. When I was in college, I didn't even really understand this or know about it. So along the way, I did um, much more jobs. And the, the point of this is that I went back to the marketing side, because at one point I went to work for UPS Freight, which I work there now. And I did marketing of and designing what the products are, so I got away from the technical side, and then I became the product manager of all, and then I had another surprise in my career. The company was downsizing, and they go, marketing uh, is really not that essential. We are going to eliminate that position, and then I go, oh no, what am I going to do? And so I went and talked to the VP in the IT department, and they go, there's not a manager's position, but there's a technical position that we think you can do as this lead technical person. So I gave up my office and 
everything to sort of start again, and that's what happens in careers. You have ups and downs. And then I got really good at it, and they go, okay, we're gonna make you a manager. And then they eventually became a director. And what I do as a director, in um, summary, is I manage everything to do with the technologies at UPS Freight. Their website, um, they have EDI, there's communications, there's all sorts of technologies that our customers use. Anything they use, my area is responsible for. So what do I do? I do strategic planning, I do project planning, I do resource planning, budget planning, manage application support, and then I communicate to senior management. All of it sounds kind of boring. But hopefully I can relate it, what I do, to what you do. Where are we going and how do, how do we do it successfully? That's strategic planning. So when you talk about um, strategic planning for your organization, some things were, what kind of group do we want to be? What is your strategy? Can anybody tell me what kind of group you want to be? What's your focus? Is it just going to be on chairmen? Is it going to be on the build? Can anybody tell me what you think your focus should be? Or is? What your, your coach has told you what the focus should be? Are you only about the robot? Yes. Our focus is building the best robot we can and spreading staff in this community. Okay. So you have a strategy, right? Good for you. Thank you for participating. <laughs> That's what I help my company to do. I help them figure out what is our strategy. And that includes, for me, because I'm in IT, things like what software tools shall I use? Is it going to be Java or .NET? All those things. How do we make sure that everything's secure so that we don't get like Target where their all their credit card stuff is stolen? Um, and then, you know, do I use what do I give to our customers, and do I use the internet, or do what kind of technologies? Project planning. What are you building here? A robot. All right. How many tasks are there to building the robot? Tons. What task are you working on today? I'm working on making the shooter arms. The shooter arms. What comes after that? What's What's another task that, you've got the shooter arms, what are some other tasks that's related to that? Um, I have to give them some way that to assemble them into the shooter. Okay. So that's planning, right? And what I end up doing is helping my folks, my managers, create a list of all those tasks. And then one has to come before the other and after, right? Um, and then who's going to complete the task? So you have a task, what is your task? Uh, designing the robot. Designing the robot. So does that come before or after her task? Before. Before. So you have to know that. You have to put everything in order. And then how long is it going to take? Two weeks. Two weeks. So she can't start on hers before then. So for two weeks, she's waiting, right? So that's, that's what project planning is. And that's what I help my team do. Resource planning. Who's a resource? Is anybody in this room a resource for the for the uh, Ched or the Cheesehead team? Who, let me put it this way, who's not a resource? No one, every one of you is a resource. Every one of you does something, right? So you have to be a resource. So what I have to do is make sure that I have all the resources we need. So what happens if you have no programmers? What would happen? Could you build the robot? Could the robot run? No. What happened if there was no safety people? <laughs> Come on! Somebody from safety. <laughs> Nothing. Missing fingers. Missing fingers. Okay. So you have to figure out for resource planning, what I do is I have to figure out. What are all the resources I need? Do I have all of them? And then what if all the programmers decided they were unhappy? Would they do a good job? Would you do a good job if you were unhappy? 
<laughs> some, some might, but a lot of them would. If you were very unhappy, I don't like the way they're coding, I don't get the opportunities, they're mean to me, would you, would you do a good job? Probably not. So part of what I have to do is make sure that the people who work and all these resources are happy. Um, and then how do I attract new employees? How do you get people to join the club? <laughs> so I have to do things like, gee, this is a great environment to work in. Just some of the same things. Is it fun? Yes. Employees, even if you're working someplace, you want to have a good time. You want to have fun. You don't want to be work, work, work. You want to enjoy your workplace. So those are all kinds of things that I have to worry about and make sure that the team that I have is happy and productive. Um, and then the last part is, how do I tell if they're doing a good job or not? Do they need more training? How do I get them more training? So those are all the kind of decisions that I have to make and help my team to make sure it's successful. Budget planning, the least favorite of all things. Do you have a budget here? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does the budget do for you? Right, allows you to do a competition. If you have a small budget, what happens? You can't do anything. Right. If you have a big budget, you can do a lot. But either way, can you can you spend more than you have? No. That's what I have to worry about too. I can't spend for my organization more than they're willing to let me spend. So I've got to make the same decisions. Gee, do I buy new computers or do I hire new people? That's all part of the budget planning process. Managing application support. What happens during a competition if the robot stops working and you take it to the pit? Fix it. Does everybody fix it? No. A group, small group of people fix it, right? Well, that's what it's saying with my thing. I have applications. When something breaks, I have to figure out who should fix it when they fix it and make sure they're available to fix it. So I gotta make sure that things are always running. Communication. I have to communicate to my senior managers. Who do you have to communicate to you on the progress of your stuff? Coach. Right. Yep. And you gotta give coach updates so you can make sure the chairman's doing their job and safety's got theirs and filled and he needs to know all of it, so he's making sure everything's done, right? I have to report to my management. They want to know things like, are the people happy? Are we on time with the project? Are there any problems I need to be aware of? Um, what direction do you think we should be going? So those are the kind of things that I have to report about. I love being in my job. I love being in technology. Um, I almost wish I was now because technology was such in the infancy when I came in and where it's going is uh, going to be amazing, I believe. So um, most of you are here because you like technology, but I want to go why you want to be in STEM, you know, for those of you who have any questions about it. Um, for me, it's always interesting and challenging work. It's creative, problem-solving work. It's always interesting. It allows me to work on projects that make a difference. Technology is going to be change the world, and the question is, do you want to be a part of it? And if you earn a good salary. Here is just some stats. Here are the top eight STEM jobs that there are. There are biomedical engineers, medical scientists, software developers, biochemists, database administrators, network administrators, software developers, and actuaries. Those are the eight top STEM jobs. And the average salary in the U.S. is $43,460. The average salary of a STEM person is $77,880. So getting into STEM, they reward you monetarily. Now, I'm in management. I started
started out as a programmer. We have a lot hard time getting people to go to management. Most of the people who I have working for me just want to code. But I just want to go over the pros and cons of being a manager because there are some really good pros to it. Um, the first is you get more exposure to the business. The thing why I chose to go in management is because I got to help make decisions. And I wanted to be a part of it and play a role in our business. <clears throat> and lastly, there's more money in management. Um, the cons. You have to make difficult decisions. Um, there's more pressure. If the, if the robot fails and your group is totally disorganized and nothing goes right, who are the parents going to be upset with? The coach. The coach. <laughs> if it's wonderfully successful, who are the parents going to congratulate? The team. team member. The team, right? So being in management is like that. You have to be ready. If you're successful, it's a team effort, and everybody's happy and proud. If it's a failure, it's you. So you have to be able to take that stress. But to me, it's absolutely worth it. And if you do things right, hopefully that doesn't happen very often. But it will. There's no doubt it will. And then you do have to work longer hours. As Katie will tell you, it doesn't, I usually work normal hours, but there's been times where I worked, for a whole month I worked 100 hour weeks. And they didn't see me at all because of the role I had to play. So those are the pros and cons. Um, I really like being in management. Um, so hopefully, if you guys are thinking about a STEM job, then also think about being in management. And is there any questions? Yes? Because you're involved in project management, uh, my, my question is, um, it's kind of like three questions at once, but um, do you have any um, management certifications? And if you don't, do you plan on getting any to like better your career? Um, I do not right at this point. I have. I continually take a lot of training classes. Um, the UPS provides what they call UPS University, and they provide, um, like I had MBA classes, but they, are, um, they don't provide the certification, but it's the same classes. Um, they're not as concerned about the certification piece of it. Now, if I was a technical person, then they would. If you're out looking for a job, the certifications would be extremely helpful. Um, I've been with uh, UPS Freight, it was bought by Overnight, but for 25 years. Um, I'm hoping to retire in five years, so I'm probably not going to worry about certifications, but certainly I encourage my folks to. And a lot of times your companies will pay for it. <coughs> They want you to get any education they'll most of the time will pay for and at least in a big you know I work for a big corporation they want as much talent as they can get and are willing to pay for training any other questions well I really appreciate your time yes do you see that the team could benefit from your experience if, uh, if, if somebody would come to you and say well since you have all this experience managing large and complicated distributing type company, and actually robotics is pretty much a large distributing organization because we distribute our information throughout only not only the other teams but through the community. Some aspects of what we do in our team that might benefit from your experience and knowledge. Um, sure. I mean, it was pretty easy for me to find examples of what. Uh, you know, how, well, you don't have to tell us how we're screwing up, but you can, you know, what I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're... <laughs> yeah, but it would be, it'd, it'd be something nice to sit down and, and go through some of the organizational stuff that we're trying to put in place um, so that we have a, what we call kind of tuity or whatever through this year to next year to next, you know, um, those type of things. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to help, and I'm, I probably could add value. I mean, part of what I do is just making sure that how I get personally reviewed by my manager is I have to continually evaluate everything we're doing and if it's not improving year over year, I get a bad performance review. So that is part of 
what I spend a lot of time. Is it better than it was last year? Are we getting better? Or is the process we have in place helping to maintain and improve? The Same organization? thing we did. So. Well, yeah. I was wondering if you did anything project management related in high school or college? Because I'm in project management class right now. Mm -hmm. They didn't exist, believe it or not, because believe it or not, when I was in high school, computers didn't exist. Um, what, once I got into um, IT, they, I took a lot of classes on it. It is extremely helpful. Um, there are lots of opportunities for people who like to do project management because believe it or not, I work in IT, and most of my folks, that is their least favorite thing to do. They don't like to manage. They just let me code. And I'm always, anybody that will do project management, I've got 27 people working for me, and I only have two people willing that would like to do project management out of 27. So the other 25, well, there's a little less because I have two managers, but 20, 23 out of the 25 don't want to have anything to do with project management. And because these developers are willing to do project management, they get the best, best pay bonus because they're willing to do both. So you're, one of the things when you're in IT, um, your ability to be flexible, your a willingness to roll with the punches and, and to do whatever the company needs is, is very much rewarding, at least from my experience. And, and that's how I think I moved up. Obviously, I didn't start as a technical person, and there were certainly lots of bumps in the road, and you know, certainly um, disappointments. But you know, the biggest thing was my willingness to just do whatever it takes, um, and the company did. Any other questions? I very much appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for having me.